Warning, concentrated sodium hydroxide is corrosive. Avoid breathing in the toxic fumes released when zinc metal burns. Ethanol is very flammable. Hi guys, here is MIH again. Even though my lab is currently closed, I still have plenty of footages on hand so I can keep making new vids for a while. Today's video is about making zinc powder from bulk zinc metal, of which we can get easily from batteries. Zinc powder is a very useful chemical both in inorganic and organic chemistry, but it is considered as a potential explosive and thus cannot be easily bought. However, because of zinc's special amphoteric properties, we can use an electrochemical approach to obtain zinc powder. The method also works with any soluble zinc salts like zinc sulfate. The reaction is already demonstrated in one of NerdRage's videos, but apart from that, today's video also features a unique workup that haven't been posted on YouTube yet. Um, as you can see here, we have a bunch of zinc casings of batteries. Uh, those ones, you can see, contains a bunch of manganese dioxide. Those ones are some unopened cans of batteries. I think I'll process them later, but for now we'll just go with those zinc. Our electrolyte is going to be a solution of sodium hydroxide. I measured out about 32 grams of sodium hydroxide and dissolved it in about 100 milliliters of water. The exact quantity doesn't need to be exact, but we want the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution to be at least 20%. Now I will prepare the electrodes. Um, here you can see I've cut out a piece of stainless steel cathode and it fits pretty nicely in the beaker just like this. Yeah. This cathode is where we're going to deposit our zinc on. And I have hooked a few pieces of zinc onto the alligator clip, and this is the anode. And we will put that into our electrolysis cell as well. And now we are ready to turn on the current. Three, two, one. There we go. Um, the current was going around 3 amps, and a lot of gases were forming at the cathode, and this gas is just pure old hydrogen. But the anode is not emitting as much of a gas. This is because the anode is slowly dissolving to form sodium zincate, which will stay in the solution. So the zinc is slowly corroding off. And now, obviously, it's not that apparent, but let's just forward skip a few minutes and see how it works. Okay, we're now about five minutes into the electrolysis, and I think there are already some zinc depositing on the cathode. Yeah, you can see that pretty clearly. The color is sort of different. This blue-gray color is pretty characteristic of zinc. But now it's like still forming a smooth deposit layer on the cathode, it's not like the zinc powder that we wanted. So we're gonna keep this going for a bit and see how it goes. Alright, we are back around 30 minutes later and you can see that the zinc anode has decreased a lot in size, meaning that it has been corroded. On the anode, the zinc gives away electrons and dissolves into the solution as something called tetrahydroxyzincate ions. The ion can also be generated if you directly add zinc salts to an excess of sodium hydroxide. The ion then gets reduced on the cathode to form pure zinc metal. The cell is very similar to an electroplating cell, except that the metal plating on the cathode is not uniform, and it is instead sponge-like. I transferred the cathode into a clean beaker, added some water, and scraped the zinc off using a spatula. The electrodes are reinstalled back to the cell, and it was restarted. The zinc in the beaker now looks like a great black sponge, and we are going to purify it. The water is decanted off, and the pH tested to be strongly alkaline. The zinc is then washed three times with about 20 milliliters of water each time. After the final washing with water, the pH is tested again to be only slightly alkaline. The zinc is then washed three more times with 99% ethanol to remove the residual water, and transferred to a mortar on the last wash. It was then grinded with a pestle for a few minutes. Here, I used a spatula to scoop out some zinc, and there were no obvious clumps, which tells me that it is already finely grinded. The final step is to light the ethanol on fire. Be very careful on this step. Do not copy me and use a lighter. 
use a lighted match instead. This step will remove most of the water left and reduce any zinc that is oxidized by the air in the previous steps. If the zinc powder is simply dried in an oven or a desiccator, it will inevitably get oxidized by the air, but this method prevents the oxidation and allows for a much purer product. Nearly all of the alcohol is gone, and I stirred the zinc vigorously to ensure uniform heating. The oxidation is easiest to happen at this stage, so be extremely careful and stir the zinc thoroughly. When the final bit of fire disappeared, the zinc powder looks like this. It is slightly darker than expected, but that is because it is still very hot. When it cooled down, its appearance resembled more like aluminum powder. The zinc powder is transferred to a vial for storage. The yield is relatively low because I harvested the zinc only after half an hour of electrolysis. If I let the cell run for something like 2 hours before harvesting the zinc, I could probably get tens of grams in one run. Anyways, I successfully made high quality zinc powder from scrap batteries. The zinc powder can be used for both inorganic and organic reduction reactions, such as displacing copper from copper sulfate, or reducing a ketone to an alkane in the Clemenson reduction. If you don't want zinc powder and instead want bulk solid zinc, then an acidic alternative by using zinc sulfate as the electrolyte also works well. Thanks for watching!